So is our life. So is your mind. Your mind, the words, words are important. Let me, as I said, there is fire about your words. There is uh, control. Uncontrolled words will defile your bodies. Words spoken without guidance can uh, can destroy and does destroy the upcoming generation. What you say about your sons, your daughters, your husband, your wife, your future, your life. It's a cycle of this nat- nature. You, you can destroy the cycle. You can destroy weather patterns by the words you speak. Oh, we But tomorrow come five hundred me milke, five hundred me milke, five hundred thousand me milke. What or Roj Boli. You know, the, the amazing thing is people are saying, just because you said it, one doesn't happen, but there is power in agreement. There's another law that goes into motion is the power of unity and agreement. Let me show you verse 8. Verse 8, dekhi jai. But the tongue, what? The tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly, so look at this, unruly evil full of deadly poison. Oh, Lord, help us. <laughs> Say, help me, Lord. There is no taming of the tongue. It says clearly, you can't tame that tongue. You can't. Men cannot tame it. Okay? Your tongue cannot be tamed by men. Therefore, once the damage is done, there is no restoring it. Ek time bol diya na? Kafi time log bole, humme u baat boli sa me aas tak ya de. Okay, but the point is this, words are so powerful when it comes out. Did you know there is no, you can redo some paint, you painted something, you didn't like it, you can redo that. If something is broken, you can patch it up and make it. But words, 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 words. Once words comes out, it comes out, you can't take it away. I take my words away. You can't put your words away and drink water. Well, since I said water, let me take a sip of water here. Praise God. You can't just drink away your word, uh, your words. You need to actually cancel those words. And you can only do it through another method that I will show you in a moment. That God's, It's God's method, not my method. So you see, what do we see? That your words that you don't tame. See, th- there is... No taming of the tongue. Therefore, once the damage is done, there is no redoing. Now listen to this. Tongue is uncontrollably, listen to this, can't control it. Uncontrollably, bad, (laughs) evil, worthless. There's nothing worthy of words. And it is full of deadly, that means it's killing, it can kill. Poison. And there's another word to that rust. When something is rusted, you can't just patch it up and take away the rust and use it. Rust. Once rust sets in, it's the end of this stuff. The same way is words. Apka vachan. Then you say, Are, brother, brother, what do I do? That's why I said the second part is nice. The first part is really bad. See, most people didn't realize that. How damaging, how powerful. But when James was saying, your words, your words, your words, what he was saying? Remember the, the danger of not putting a control and you can't. And then at the end, and he said, he gives that you must control, control, control. And he says, no man can tame that tongue. It feels like there's no more hope, but there is hope. Amen. And I will show you. This is where the hope begins. What is God's answer to this problem of the untainable, uncontrollable, worthless words that we speak? And let me show you to you. From the Old Testament first. Going to Genesis, uh, uh, no, not Genesis, Exodus chapter 4. The story of Moses. Moses stuttered. He, he, he spoke, uh, the, 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 he, he stumbled over words, right? Uh, go, 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 God, or, or Lord, 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 Lord. He used to say like that. So he used to play around with words because he couldn't speak. He was stuttered or he had a stammering tongue. And so he says, Lord, I can't go. The people will make fun of me. And he said, listen. Listen to what God says. Then he gets Aaron to speak for him. But this is what God said to uh, Moses. Exodus chapter 4, 11 and 12. Just two verses. And I'll read to you. And the Lord said to him, to Moses, Who hath made man's mouth? Aha! Here we can answer. Who made my mouth and my tongue? God did. Okay. God, if you made it, you can fix it. All right. Or oh, who maketh the dumb and deaf or seeing or the blind? Not Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go. 
What he's saying, go and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee what thou shalt say. The Lord here is taking responsibility, not over everybody, but over especially Moses. When you go, I will teach you. I'll put my words in your mouth and I will teach you how to speak those. Okay. So in the Old Testament, God takes responsibility to helping those who spoke in the Old Testament speak God's word because the Holy Spirit would come in on them and they'd speak like God, speak and speak life. Okay. Next place. In the book of Jeremiah, as we are uh, we coming to a close, but I want to just go through these scriptures to show you. Jeremiah chapter 1. I believe you have Jeremiah in your Bible. Uh, I'm reading from that. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 7, and, 7 to 9. And I'll read this to you. This Jeremiah is saying, Oh Lord God, uh, saying, uh, uh, the Lord is saying to him, because he said, I'm a young man, right? I'm a child. And then the Lord said to him, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. John says, Whatever I say, you say. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Then the Lord, look at this. How does God put his words in our mouth? This is how he does it, so that you can speak life. This is what he does. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Now that's before when the Bible was written. They just, I believe, had the, uh, the old covenant, uh, uh, the, the first, first, first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch. So they had the Torah, the Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, uh, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And uh, wait, I've got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They had that only. But by then, what he's saying is, as you go to speak and prophesy, God said, this is how you're going to do. He touched his mouth. What did God do? God touched his mouth and said, now nah, I'll speak through you. So in order for your tongue and your mouth to speak life, God has to touch it. God has to cleanse it. See, because as much as we are saved, our, uh, you know, as much as we believe we are saved, our tongue needs salvation also, our words. Because see, God has to bring us back to the original way of living on earth. And that is by taking command of what you say. See, if you want to rule and reign on earth like Adam and like the last Adam, Jesus, you will need to know how to take control of your words. You know, Jesus spoke very few words, but when he spoke, it became read in the Bible, just you can see. It was full of heat. So when Jesus went and there was uh, uh, the, the, there was wave and he was sleeping, he didn't get up. Oh, let me see how I feel. Oh, what happened, Peter? He wasn't wasting words. Everything Jesus said was purposeful, was, was sent to bring life and victory. Think about that. Think, think people with me. So what was the difference between Jesus? If you want to take command of this earth, you've got to take command of your words. And that comes only when God has sanctified and cleansed your mouth. I'll show you. Uh, I'm not going to read that, but you can go and read it yourself in the book of Isaiah chapter 6. I'm just going to read to you just two verses from there and then we'll go on. Isaiah chapter 6 is when uh, Isaiah saw uh, the Lord, the vision, and the angel of the Lord came from the altar, took a tongue, and put the coal of the altar, life coal in his tongue. And this is what happened, verse 5. And then I said, woe is me. See, he's saying, woe is me. I'm undone because I am a man. Look at that. He's, he is saying, I am an unclean man. I'm not worthy man because he says, I am a man of unclean lips. So he said, my sin and my salvation is found in my tongue. But right now salvation is not found. So he's finding sin in his mouth. And he said, I dwell among people of unclean lips. He's not talking about sin. He's talking about sin in the mouth. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a life call in his hand and and he had taken from the tongs of uh, of the altar. This is the altar I believe with today for us. The altar is the blood of Christ. I will show you later in a moment. Also, I heard, uh, and he said, and he laid it on my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched your lips. Thine iniquity or sin is taken away. Your iniquity is taken away and thy sin purged. Wait, 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 wait. What just happened here? 
The, the altar is where the prayers, the offering was said. So the, what God accepts men through the sacrifice or the altar was a place where men could come back to God and put, make a plea. And because of the sacrifice, God would answer them. But here is from the altar, the blood of the coals of the sacrificed lambs. He takes the coal of that or the rest over residue. I believe the symbolic of Christ, the lamb burned for us part of that and touched his tongue. See, the only time you can speak life giving words, it's in you. But when you choose for God to touch is, is when the blood has touched your life. When you have received Jesus and confessed Jesus, the moment you confess Jesus, he cleanses you, makes you clean. There is no curse, no devil, no uncleanness in you. See, but what happens is your ability to rule in life, your ability to see good days is hindered until you know and train your tongue to speak what God wants you to speak. And I'll show you the solution God gave to humanity. This is the answer also found in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11. Now, the, uh, listen to me. Don't go anywhere. Stay there. Read this with me. This is the most important. This is the answer. This is the main part, the conclusion of the message now. Listen to me. Listen, look at this. Isaiah 28, 11 is the prophetic word God is going to give to the children of Israel about how God is going to walk with their mouth and how God is going to heal their tongue. For verse 10 says, precept must be upon precept, uh, line upon line, uh, line upon line, here a little, there a little. For with stammering lips and other tongue will I speak to this people. Wait. God is saying here, with stammering lips, that uh, that word stammering is actually foreign. There's a word to the meaning in the Hebrew is with foreign tongues or foreign words. How can it be? I'm a Jew. I speak Hebrew. But God is saying with a foreign word or stammering, which is strange tongues, I will speak to them. Wait, God's going to speak to me through foreign and strange words? How can that be? Let me show you. This is the answer. First Corinthians this is the answer to your tongue. You know how God healed men's tongue? By giving them a new tongue. <laughs> Most people don't understand. God changed, gave you a tongue. I'll show you. Go to X chapter 2. X chapter 2. This is the answer for tongue. Before we go to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, I want to take you to uh, X chapter 2. And I'm uh, uh, say about in the next few minutes, I'll be finishing here. But let me show you something. X chapter 2. Verse 3 and 4. Don't think you know it. Read it with me. Acts chapter 2, 3 and 4. And there appeared unto them cloven, means holy tongues, like as of fire. You see, tongue is a fire. It is another tongue with fire. <laughs> and it set upon each one of them. These are the born again believers after the cross, the first church. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And what's the next thing they did? They began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak or utter words. Wow. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm excited already. Learn more from God's Word and send us your prayer request by visiting our website www.jclm.org or you can like our Facebook page Jesus Christ is Lord Ministries to keep up with the now word of the Lord for the season. Follow us on Instagram, JCLMPG. Better still, subscribe to our YouTube channel, JCLMPG, to receive the latest teaching of God from the ministry.